what it means to be a virtuous woman and what helps to maintain to be a strong witness. So we have four lovely, precious women of God that we'll share today. And first up will be our sister Sheree, and then following will be Minister Janiqua. I'm here. I'm trying to get my video going. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Blessing to be here with y'all and just share this time. I was very surprised to be called and first up, but I'm thanking God that he gave me what he wants me to say. Um, so I have Deuteronomy um, chapter 30, verses 19 through 20. That's, um, that's a very important scripture to me. Um, it's also Another one that uh, kind of a guiding scripture for me is Psalm 71, 17 to 18, and they kind of tie together, but I'm just going to give the Deuteronomy. And um, it's in the NLT, and I also love it in um, A Amplified, but I'm just going to read it. It says, today I give you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heavens and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you're you and your descendants may live. That's mm -hmm. the part for me. You can make the choice by loving God, your Lord God, mm -hmm. obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so for me, the word, key word for me is descendants. Um, you know, looking at, what God says, the, the scriptures before it say like, um, the word is nigh to you. God is close to you and there's no secret way he's showing you how to really follow him except by loving him and, and learning his word. You know, it's not a secret. You don't have to go far to heaven to get it. It's not far from you and somebody has to bring it to you. He comes constantly to give us opportunities mm -hmm. to become close to him. So I just wrote down like every choice that you make brings you closer to one or the other, either life or death prosperity or destruction. And um, I think of it, there's a movie called The Adjustment Bureau I saw, where basically um, there's like people in these little suits, 40s looking suits that other people can't see. And every time people make a decision, they either like push them in one direction or push them in another direction to get them back on their path of whatever they're supposed to be in life or what's, what they're supposed to do in life. I feel like God gives us opportunities through the ministering spirits, like, you know, the Holy Spirit, especially oh, you should do this or you shouldn't do that. And sometimes they're not always clear. And so, you know, something will happen and he will give you a word or bring a word to your remembrance that says, oh, that's what this meant. That's why I heard this thing. And so you make the right choice based on the Holy Spirit giving you that prompting. Um, so, I, I, you know, it's just, um, for me, important to be still enough because I move around a lot, um, be still enough to listen for when he's guiding us to which direction it is for each thing to do what is um what is within God's plan for us. And um, you know, you can only be aware of it if you go by God's word, you learn God's word, you study God's word. Because if you know somebody, you know what they would tell you and what they wouldn't tell you. And, and that's how God is with us with that relationship. But for me, I want that to go on to the offspring, to the generations. Like when they see what you do, then they will know how it works. They will know and believe yeah. they will believe how it works oh i remember my mother this happened my mm -hmm. father and my mother they prayed mm -hmm. or they didn't do this and some people were doing that but they didn't do that or they you know whatever the case may be you know and it says he is my life you know he says this is your life god doesn't want you to just survive he wants us to thrive he wants our kids to see us thriving getting better getting stronger we all have faults we all have problems you know there's generational things that we carry but god is the one who lifts them off us as we allow him and trust him to do that. So he's our liveliness. You know, he's my, for me, he's my liveliness. He's my energizer. He's my hope. He's the one who makes me feel like even though something might be a certain way, no, but he said he's going to do it. And I've seen him do other stuff before. So he must be telling the truth. And, and that's what energizes me. And then I could be an energizer to somebody else, you know? And um, he's a sustainer. He's a healer. Yes. You know, it's not just about the jumping around. Sometimes it's the calmness and the peace. And the, no matter what, I'm looking straight. Keep my eyes like Flint. As someone told me once, keep your eyes like Flint, set on the Lord. So, you know, he wants us to thrive. And um, 
you know, he's constantly giving us opportunities to get better, to do better, to feel better. So we just got to listen and, um, you know, and really choose life Mm -hmm. for us and for our kids, for our generations, for our family members, for whoever's around us, people whose neighbors and, you know, people you see at work and just you choose life and they'll see the, the beauty of life, not just the weight of life. Yeah. So that's for me, my encouragement. And I got somebody here. I want to put her little face in here. Put your little face in there. Thank you, everybody, for all your prayers. God bless you. Good to see you, Nada. <laughs> we choose in life. Yeah, yeah. Love you, Anidra. Thank you. Oh, that's Dalton. Hi. <laughs> So thank y'all. I didn't know it was going to be first, but he did it for a reason. Thank yeah. you, Lord. So good. <laughs> yeah. Love thank y'all. Thank you so much, Shireen, Um, for that powerful, that was pretty good. That was good tidbits. And we appreciate you. And yes, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Now up, Minister Janiqua. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sheree, for that. Um, One of the things that being that we are talking about, you know, being a virtuous woman, I think that one of the things that really helped me uh, to become this virtuous woman over the years is um, (laughs) just learning what God thinks about me, learning who I am in him and seeing myself the way that he sees me has really helped me to become cognizant of and just reflect on everything that I do down to, you know, from what I say, the words that come out of my mouth, um, down to the clothes that I'm wearing, um, and, and to how I carry myself, whether it's, you know, specifically around children, around my child, around my, my cousins and things like that, the way that I carry myself. Um, so I, I do want to just start off by sharing um, something, a quick note. Uh, for something that I'm I'm a part of like this group. And I thought that this was a perfect timing that this week when I found out that I had to do this, this popped up. So it says a virtuous wife is a woman of worth, dignity, character, and beauty. She does not dress to seek vain attention. She does not disrespect herself nor dishonor her husband by exposing her body in public. A virtuous wife does not dress indecently to entice, seduce, or tempt the weak brother. So again, that's going back to motives and thinking about why we do the things that we do. Why am I saying the things that I'm saying? Why am I addressing the way that I'm dressing? We all think about, you know, what we're doing before we do it. Before something be- can become a reality and an action can take place, it has to first be become a thought in our mind. And so just going back and making sure that I'm checking my motives. Wait, why do I want to p- put this on? I know the attention that is going to attract, right? So, okay, I'm going to change or I'm going to wear a long sweater to cover up so that I'm not drawing that negative attention or the attention that I don't really want. That doesn't mean I don't, I don't, I can't walk outside and look cute, right? <laughs> I can look cute covered up. Um, so yes, I know Teresa over there, virtuous woman over there, girl, <laughs> you do this. Um, all right. Awesome. So it says she is a priceless jewel whose worth is not, she is a priceless jewel whose worth is not measured by outward adornment from the grace of her aura to the swell of her hips, everything about her honors God. The simplicity of her style reveals the elegance of her character and her entire wardrobe honors God. While she dresses elegantly, a virtuous wife doesn't strive for outward beauty that just turns men's heads towards her. She strives for inner beauty that turns men's hearts towards God. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Jesus. Sorry, that was beautiful. Her style is not determined by Hollywood, but by the holy word. A virtuous woman doesn't just follow trends. She sets trends. She she doesn't just follow glamorous models. She is a glorious role model. A virtuous wife is not a disgrace to her sisters or a sneer to her brothers, a humiliation to her husband, nor a dishonor to God. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? And that is Proverbs 31.10. I also want to share 
something that just grounds me and serves as a reminder. And that is Romans 12. I'm going to start from verse one. And it just talks about being a living sacrifice to God. And it says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So that is something that, you know, just serves as a reminder for me just to always check my motives of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and that has helped me to become this virtuous woman that I am. <laughs> all right. That's all. That concludes my, my, my share out. Love y'all. <laughs> we love you too. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> Awesome, niece. I'm sure we all received that. And thank you so much for your words as usual. Um, up next is Sister Samantha. There you go, cousin. Bless you. Bless you, everyone. Um, my, um, it kind of ties in with um, what Janiqua just was um, sharing. Um, I'm going to start by these scriptures. And this one is Proverbs 14, verse 1. And it says, a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hand. And that's from the NLT. And then I wanted to share, this is um like a women's devotional. And I want to share this, and then I will speak. Um, Proverbs 31, 30 reminds us that what's truly worth praising Worth celebrating. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Notice it's not a woman with a spotless house who is to be praised. It's not a mom with perfectly behaved children wearing matching designer outfits. Honestly, it's not even the woman who's married and has children. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. This isn't an I'm a fear of God kind of, I'm afraid of God kind of fear. This type of fear reference to having a heart completely in awe of God. It describes a woman who honors God by seeking him in everything she does and trusting him wholeheartedly with her life. She has a heart of reverence that overflows into the into a life of spiritual maturity and wisdom. So um amen. So that saying. Um, basically what kind of like what Janika was saying, um, far as being tied into being a virtuous woman and a strong witness for Christ is that everything in our life, um, a really a virtuous woman is a woman who fears God. And like she was saying, when you reverence God, fear God, you want to please God and you want everything in your life to be aligned with God and you want everything to be aligned with what God's will is and pleasing to God. And so like she was sharing that's and everything and how we are as, as women, far as it comes to um, how we dress, how we, how we speak. Um, also as wives, how we are, how we are with our husbands, how we treat our children, everything in our life is, um, will will demonstrate that. And being a strong witness, um, I, ha I have some testimonies on that, but I just always believe that deep in deep inside, I always feel in my heart that the Holy Spirit is always reminding me that my life is a witness unto others, and not just in my family, but on my job, on um, in our communities and my neighborhood, that people are watching. People are seeing it. And then sometimes you don't think because maybe you feel like you're not accomplishing all of the things that you want to do in life or desires and stuff like that. So you feel like it's, you know, people are not really seeing that how, how great Christ is in your life. But the mere fact that people see that you are a virtuous woman, that you stand for holiness and righteousness, that you deduct yourself and the behaviors like when she was speaking about how we speak and, um, how we dress and how we carry ourselves, people do witness that. They do see that. And they do see certain things that not just women that's around us, but also men around you, that they just know 
um, that they can't approach you in certain ways. They can't, they, they just see that light and they just know that you are. And I've witnessed that from my own life where people, it just seems like they can't talk to me a certain way. Like they will talk to other people or they can't approach it. And the Holy Spirit has ways of reminding me that, that I am a witness to, of Christ to others and when people say things like it's just something about you or they don't they drawn to you and they don't know if it's just your personality but you really know it's the light it's the God in you that does uh, why they join to you and so to be for, so being the strong that encouraged me to continue to be a strong witness for Christ and to be mindful and, and, you know, and in my heart that people are watching you, they, they see you, they want to, you know, um, they like a lot of times the only way that people might experience Christ is to us. So how we, how we act and our attitudes and different things like that, you know, they see that, they see that within us. And so for me, uh, being a virtuous woman, like, like it says in the scripture is that he, um, the woman who fears God and puts God above everything else is the one is a what makes you virtuous and and doing so in our everyday lives and every decisions that we make if we put in God there then we would see you know that would come forth and um and just continue to to go about it sometimes you might so I want to just encourage others sometimes you might not feel like is you a strong witness for Christ or are you really ex, you know showing that um and it will remind you of little things, you know, you will see people when they see you and stuff like that. And they just, you know, they, they was, they was even coming back to you and tell you little things. And you might not even know at that time that they, how much they appreciate you or just your mere presence, but it's really because of his presence. We carry his presence. And so, um, that's just a, wanted to share that to be a witness of Christ and, continue to motivate you to live this virtuous, righteous, holy life. So I just wanted to share that to maybe encourage others. And that's what I had to share this morning. So amen. 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 Glory to God. That was good. (laughs) Glory to God. Last up, we have Minister Teresa. Praise the Lord, family. Um, that was awesome, all who, who came before me. And um, God's word is so good that there's there's enough to go around for all of us. Only one of my scriptures was used, and Samantha used that um, Proverbs 14.1, but I have more than enough. <laughs> um, I think just to piggyback off of what everyone else said, um, similarly, um, just God has used my life from the teenage years to be a witness. Um, I have Ruth 311 um, and it says, and now my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. And then Proverbs 12, one through eight, to learn the truth, you must long to be teachable or you can despise correction and remain ignorant. If your heart is right, favor favor flows from the Lord, but a devious heart invites his condemnation. You can can expect success by doing what's wrong, but the lives of his lovers are deeply rooted and firmly planted. The integrity and strength of a virtuous wife transforms her husband into an honored king but the wife who disgraces her husband weakens the strength of his identity. The lovers of God are filled with good ideas that are noble and pure, but the schemes of the sinner are crammed with nothing but lies. The wicked use their words to ambush and accuse, but lovers of God speak to defend and protect. The wicked are taken out, gone for good, but the godly families shall live on. Everyone admires a man of principles, but the one with the corrupt heart is despised. And so even much of what Samantha was saying, um, I ran into, matter of fact, I was with Samantha. I was walking her to the train station a couple of weeks ago, and I ran to someone I haven't seen since I was maybe 15 or 16. And we're, I think he's maybe a year older than me, but one of the things that he said was, you are always a breath of fresh air. 
And that's not uncommon. I go into offices. I'm, I go to different churches. I'm just around a lot of people. And that's something that they always say. It's like, my goodness, what is it about you? But as, as we've all said today, we know that it is the spirit of God and it's the way that we carry ourselves to the point where even on my block, you know, um, like um, Elder Q was saying, just the times that we live in, there's no reverence for cops. There's no reverence for holiness. But when I pass by, they will hide their, their reefer. They will hide their bottles. They will, you know, show respect in their words and say, you know, pardon me, ma'am, you know, and that same respect carries on to, to my family, all that's attached to me. When they see dad come, come on the block, they don't know he's a pastor, but there's a reverence that, you know, they, they, they welcome him onto two nights, you know, and this block is known to be like a, a bad block, if you will, but there's a reverence there, a holy reverence, you know, and that stems down to even my daughter where, you know, it, it's not a concern for me. So my next scripture is First uh, Timothy 4.12. And I mean, you guys can read the rest of it on your own, I believe even 11 through 16, all of Timothy way. <laughs> but um, it says, let no one despise you for your youth, but set believers on an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. So even as we witness to the world, let us have that same compassion and patience and love that, you know, our lives shine, not just for the world, but directly into our families with our speech, you know? Um, and I just said, um, we are to be imitators of Christ. And that is an example I want to set for all who know me and even those that know of me, you know, I just want that to be said of me. Oh, have you heard about this girl? Yes, there's a standard, you know? And so that's all I have, amen. Wonderfully said. Wonderfully said. Thank you all for sharing. I um, enjoyed it all. I'm sure all of us received something from it. And we just thank God for all of you for sharing your heart and um, just giving us words of encouragement. 